Folks, today on Crossing South, we meet a Baja resident who's a master at his craft. And we explore tasty desserts in Tijuana, and it's all coming to you this very moment. The glimmer of the sun bouncing off the Baja coastline. One of the nuances making Baja a sought after place, not only to visit, but to live. You know, folks, across uh, the Baja Peninsula, you have all these uh, subdivisions, these communities, uh, many in which expats uh, have made their lives, not only from the US, but from you know different uh, countries around the world, because Baja is just like, it's cheaper to live. You can, you can I mean, it's, it's got dirt roads. I mean, some of the, there's some setbacks, but people who have made a life here in Baja really don't mind that. You know, it's, you, can, you can have a, a significantly, um, you know, comfortable home uh, without the rat race and a very laid back community. And with all the things that our show, you know, has shown you just in your backyard. And we're gonna talk to one guy, very interesting man, who has made a life for himself also in Baja and there's the guy behind me right now. His name is Mark Killian. How you doing, buddy? All right, how's it going, man? <laughs> how yeah. long have you been living here, man, in Baja? Um, I've had this place about eight years, I would guess. Seven, eight seven years? Seven or eight years, yeah. And I've been coming down about 10 years. Some people from uh, more developed countries, they're like, oh, I don't know if I could live in a place with dirt roads or whatnot. Yeah. What would you say to people who are used to maybe a certain type of uh, community? Well, you know, <clears throat> each to their own, and I, and I heard your walk up, and I would say that's one of the, the, the pluses of this place Isn't for me it? is the dirt roads <laughs> and the fact, you know, I like that about it, you know. I have my life in Los Angeles, which is, you know, the big city, right. Hollywood. The normal stuff. And then this is where I come to, to get away and, you know, to do some kind of different work, and there's horses going past here all day. And, and you have a beautiful view in front of you right It's amazing, now. I mean, how can you not be creative? You've got you're... ocean, you've got mountains, yeah. you've got this river in front of yeah, you. Yeah, that's brilliant. You know, for want of a better term, it's, they, it's third world, but I'm from a third world country too, if you want right, to call it that. Right. So I, I love that about Mexico and I always have. Ever the since crustier, the coming. better, right? Exactly. <laughs> because that's where you find the, the cool stuff, you know, you lift the rock up and you're like, oh my God, you know, that's amazing. Whereas, but don't think he's roughing it out. He's got a very nice yeah, house. horrible. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna Come to my out, tent. <laughs> Mark invited us to get to know his rustic piece of paradise. Okay, so this is, I understand, your inspiration. And <laughs> there's a reason, folks, why he has a keyboard here. Mark, you want to tell us what you do for a living? So I'm a film composer. Um, you know, I write music for movies, some TV. And I work here, and I work back, back in Los Angeles, so I have a studio back there. But the way it works for me is when I, when I start on a new movie, I come down here to develop the themes and the, you know, what I'm going to do with the movie. Really? So like I'll bring a, this time I don't have many, but I'll bring a batch of little instruments that I think I'm going to use in that movie. And I just come down here and I play and just try stuff out and, you know, eventually sort of st start developing the theme. And then once I've got that, I go back to LA and I, you know, write and produce. This is where you get your inspiration. Exactly. And <laughs> actually last year I did something new, which I had been wanting to do for a long time. I worked with a couple of musicians from Ensenada. Oh, who local! Are good friends of mine. Local musicians. Um, so anyway, I got um, you know a bunch of them together in a recording studio in Ensenada, and I bought literally a truckload of instruments from LA. No way. Because I have tons of instruments from all over the world that I just collect and collect. Okay. Uh, and we spent three days in the studio projecting the movie up on the wall, and I just said to them, "There's all these instruments. Pick up whatever you like. Make whatever noise you like with it." And we're going to record everything. And Sitar, well, dulcimer. You know? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. Probably like, slightly easier instruments like wood blocks and stuff. But, um, but we, you know, we had all sorts of stuff. And, yeah, yeah. And, oh, that's so, that's, so fun. Yeah. For how long have you been doing it now, scoring films? Oh, for ever since I came to LA about 23 years ago. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So and you're still time. doing it. You must be good. You're still doing it. I'm surviving, <laughs> man. I mean, I love it. It's it's kind of what I do, you know. So I come down here with a, with a instruments or whatever I, I think I might use in that film and I sort of will put the picture up and push play on and loop it and I'll just let you know I'll take a scene whatever I'm uh -huh. thinking about maybe I want to work on and I'll just let it loop and then I'll walk around here pick up an instrument play. Pick 
goes, and then suddenly I'll go like, okay, maybe, maybe that's a good sound. Right, for that um, scene. For that scene. So you're not um, looping the whole film, you're, you're looping just, a scene. Just, just a scene, just, oh, just, wow. just to start trying to see what I can you know, bring to this picture. Right. What, what kind of emotional um, you know, setting does it need? Uh, and, and once I start finding something that works, then I'll, you know, using that mic, or sometimes I bring more mics, um, then I'll record it in, and then I'll say, okay, now what do I add to that? And then I'll go look for another instrument, um, and so start building these ideas. And then I'll, then I'll, the next day I'll do another scene. The next day I'll do another scene. And then maybe by the fourth day I'm like, oh, that first day was awful. <laughs> Let me just throw that all away and start again on that scene now that I've discovered these other things. So it just goes like this, um, you know, for weeks. It's a very interesting profession, you know, probably a very small percentage of human beings on the planet do what you do, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you ever imagine you'd end up, you know, in the yeah. Baja Peninsula never, living? Never, never. <laughs> I didn't ever even thought, thought about really coming down to Mexico. And, um, you know, people say, oh, it's nice for a holiday. I was like, okay, fine. Um, but I never came. And then I got a movie which was sh shot in TJ. Um, what? It was called North by El Norte. You're like, I'm going to do a movie about TJ. I should go to TJ to see how it is, right? To Baja. Um, and, and then I just spent weeks like walking the streets of TJ at night. You, know, you can't read that stuff up in a book. You've got to breathe the air and smell the streets. As a film composer, yeah. Yeah. you show up to Tijuana. What's the impression? Just tell me what you, what you got, what vibe? At first, uh, I, I suppose I was quite surprised how uh, how music, how much music is woven into culture here. Oh, wow. Which, which it's very much like that in Africa too. Um, it really is a, um, you know, y there's music everywhere here. Right. You walk the streets, there's groups. Uh, Blasting. Know, all over the place, walking the streets with their basses and their, you know, Norteño groups and all this stuff. And right. Um, every bar you go to, you know, there's, there's a lot of music here. So this is a piece I, I, you know, wrote right here. And this is just up the road here. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What instrument is that? Is that a... So that's a Ron Rocco, which is actually a Bolivian instrument. It's beautiful. Man. So you get that clip and you're like feeling it, right? Yeah. And I'm just trying to see how, how does it feel to be this guy? You know, what's... What's going on in his head, and how do you how, how do you emote all of this? You know. Wow. So you know that's an example of <laughs> that is so you know, cool. I did an Indian movie some years ago. I went to India. Um, you know, I've done you know I've done South African movies. Of course, I'm from there, but I do go back there to to work and to record. And you know, I feel it's important to get to try and at least distill the culture in, into your, you know, it's almost like you're making a, 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 a mixed drink, right? You've got to put a bit of that culture in there yeah. with everything else that's yours. A little bit of ingredients. You got, exactly. you got to taste that little, you know, exactly. regional exactly. touch. And exactly. I, I can definitely hear it there. Yeah. Can you show me a little example of how you would do like uh, something, uh, you're going to score something, a little bit of your process? I'll just show you how it's put and then I'll give it to you and you can play it. You basically are you, are you going to put that in my head? I'm going to put it on your lap. <laughs> if I put it on your head, it'll hurt. <laughs> oh my goodness. What sort of wizardry is this? <laughs> no way. How can so much sound come from this? Amazing, right? So give it a shot. Tell me you know, what it before. Tell me what this alien artifact is. This is basically an inverted steel drum in a way. Okay. It's called a hang drum invented by a guy in Switzerland. They're very hard to make and they're quite expensive and difficult to come by. We looked it up, 900 bucks on eBay. Wow. Just, so what do I do? Just, just, just tap on those things. You see those? And this one. It took me a bit even to get it to make a sound. I think I'd rather have Mark play it. <laughs> I feel like I'm transported to another place. I don't think anyone who would hear that would imagine what instrument what, what you it is. played. Yeah, yeah. That, that's amazing. Yeah. So let's say I'm working on a scene and, you know, that, that's kind of working for me. Maybe, you know, it's you walking through 
the river over there with a horse. Yeah. And, you know, you're thinking about of course. something. And, uh, Me with flaming red hair, last it, of the Mohicans. That's you know, exactly. Horse. Exactly. Pecs, you know, <laughs> showing. <laughs> You know, and then maybe I'm looking to, you know, reflecting on your childhood or a lost love or something. Of course. And then, so then you, you maybe you want to bring in something. So maybe that now makes the scenes feel a bit different of now. Course, because that, it's that more I, reflective. I, I think I brought a cowboy hat on now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Prospector hat. <laughs> Hank! I'm calling you out! <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's sort of what I do. And then, you know, maybe I'll pick up a... Maybe you want... You know, you can do this. Just hit something. <laughs> In time with that, and you know, maybe you want a bit of rhythm because now just hit something. Now right? you're on the horse and you're going. You need a bit of rhythm or something, or clapping, or whatever you want to do. Okay. Let me record that, and then it'll be it'll be mine. It'll be yours forever. <laughs> but I'm not paying you. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nor do I want to. This experience alone is reward itself and itself, uh, Mark. Yeah, let me just. That. Maybe you're riding a horse in a big, far, vast expanse of space. I can see it. And so you'd want something like this, perhaps. <laughs> so it's a very crude example, but that's <laughs> that's how we roll, man. Very nice, man. <laughs> you got me excited, man. You got a nice job. I gotta say, I got a nice job. You do. Nice you do. <laughs> you do. I mean, do you want to swap for a, for a, for a week? <laughs> exactly. I, I think you could have the skill for mine. I don't think I could have the skill for yours. Oh, but nonetheless, you, it's, that was it's, a stellar uh, performance. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> Mark, oh my goodness. Is there anything else that, that, that maybe you can tell us about Baja before we close this out? You know, it's, it's, people ask, ask me a lot what it is about this place. That, and of course, it's all of this. This is beautiful. Um, you know, people say, do you go there because it's cheap? No. Do you go there because it's this? No. You know what I really come here for is the people. Right. And there's right. something about the heart and soul of, Mexi of Mexicans and, and, and of Mexico um, that from the very first day I arrived in TJ, uh, ten years ago, I just felt very comfortable with. There's something about it that reminds me a little bit about how people are in, 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 really? in South Africa. <clears throat> there's an openness of heart. There's a, there's not a sense of, you know, um, live to work. There's a sense of work to live. You know, like in ancient times, it was almost like a duty for you to take care of a foreigner or a stranger. You know, in yeah. ancient cultures, yeah. right? Yeah. Somebody's walking by your land or whatever, you, yeah. you feed them in some exactly. other way. Yeah. Hospitality is almost like a must it's, it's, in ancient yeah. culture, it's right? It's woven into the... Into Correct. The, into and, the, and here, this region is, is, is like that. It's like you that. being a foreigner yeah. have probably experienced that. Yeah. Well, all over Mexico. I mean, Oaxaca, I'd say even more so. Yeah. You know? um, so, you know, like I was saying last night, Mexico's like an onion, and you think it's one thing. And right. The more you look and the more you peel, the more you're like, oh, wow, this... This place, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff to experience here. This is really cool. And Mark's pretty cool. More crossing south coming your way. Stay with us folks. Don't go anywhere. Mark's open-minded view of this region has rewarded him with musical creativity. And now we head north towards Tijuana in search for something sweet. You know, finding a good dessert in Baja is very easy when you go to any quality restaurant. However, finding a place that serves basically exclusively desserts or more prominently desserts, it's a little bit harder to find. They do exist, 
but you have to dig a little bit deeper. And we did today. We found a place that serves uh, very well-reviewed crepes. So follow me, folks. This should be a sweet one. It's crossing south. Don't go anywhere. Creperia Polanco, which means Polanco Crepe Shop, is a small place that still has that local charm and flavor. We are inside a place called Creperia Polanco. We're gonna ask some questions to uh, one of the masterminds behind the designs here, <laughs> Selene. You. How are you doing, Selene? Hi, nice to meet you. Likewise, Thank likewise. You. So what's your role? I heard that you are you know, part of the you know, team that actually designed some of these uh, some of these desserts, some of these yes. crepes? Yeah? Yes, yes. Talk to me about it. Where did you learn to do that to begin with? So I studied here in Tijuana. Oh, really? Yes. The At school. one of the culinary arts schools or yes. what? Yes. It's actually called like that. It's culinary arts school here in Tijuana. With your training from the culinary arts school, have you tweaked crepes? You know, are they a little bit different than somewhere else, maybe, or is it pretty basic? Your your, your crepes as as they would be anywhere else. There's a lot of crepes all over Tijuana, all over the world. Okay. So we want to bring you something different, something that you can just taste in Polanco. Oh, really? It, can you tell me a little bit of your style, like the style of crepes? How would you describe your style of crepes? So I guess I try to have uh, different elements in the crepes. So I go for something crunchy, something tasty, something caramelized, something different, something sweet, but not too sweet. But sometimes we have like the two opposites. We have too sweet and not too sweet. <laughs> It's like, it's crazy, the menu yes. can be... Sweet and tangy, yes. you like to combine salty and, and, yes, and exactly. gotcha. We have everybody's favorite, we have Nutella, we have cajeta, here in Mexico we use it a lot. Which is like so, a caramel, cajeta's yes, like caramel, right? Exactly. I'm ready to try your stuff, okay? You're gonna <laughs> love it, I'm sure you're gonna love it. It's crossing south, folks, let's see, I'm giddy, I'm giddy. I have a sweet tooth, I haven't done many dessert places because I haven't found that many. So you're one of the first ones I'm doing, okay? So, <laughs> it's crossing south, folks, stay with us. So they've got crepes, waffles, coffee. What? What is this doing here? No, this is what we came for, and this is what we shall have. So it's a hard job, but somebody does have to do it. And uh, would you look at this, folks? I mean, just look at that. So this is a guava caramel cream cheese diplomat cream uh, crepe and it's wrapped up almost like a like a thick burrito it's got some nuts on top raspberry and we're just gonna try that okay so if we add a if we add a little bit of of guava here I'm really giddy folks I don't even know what to, what angle to get it from all right I'll do my best holy crud <laughs> oh man you see you see you were coveting it you were coveting it, and you took it out of my mouth with your vibes, with your covetousness, but I've recovered it, okay? All right, let's see. Jorge happy. Jorge good. <laughs> Dessert is definitely a feeling. Oh my goodness, the amount of calories this must have. But hey, I only do this every once in a while. Wink, wink. I had a mom who could, you know, not only cook, but bake. And, you know, she accustomed us to uh, <laughs> enjoying every meal with a little dessert. So uh, I can appreciate a good dessert as good as the next guy. Okay, so this seems to be their specialty. Their specialty are these bubble waffles. You can see these uh, bubbled up things. Apparently they have air inside, have some glazed sugar here, has ice cream inside, but it has cream cheese inside. This is a combination of, of cream cheese you can see the different texture right there, mixing up with the ice cream. For you nutritionists out there, how many, how many hours in the gym will it take to just that biteful, much less this whole thing? We're moving up one in the taste meter Oh my goodness, this is even better. <laughs> this is even better than the last one. Oh man, that cream cheese really makes a difference. That cream cheese and ice cream really hits a spot. I think it's the apples. Also the apple cinnamon. I think that, that just has a little bit of a better flavor even. 
I'm not, big, I'm not a big guayaba guy, guava kind of guy. Maybe that's why. It was delicious. But I think this one it just overtook the other one. So this one, it's got cream cheese. It's got the strawberries. It's their bubble uh, waffles. Got some uh, crumble there. Ice cream and strawberry sauce. Let's try to hit this one. Once we've separated the cream cheese from the herd, we've isolated a weak strawberry. There's a science to this, folks. There's some methodology going on here. This is not for novices. It takes a seasoned expert to do this. Oh, it fell, but it's going back, don't worry. A little crumble, a little strawberry sauce. And there you go, folks. You've got your cream cheese, you've got your strawberry sauce, your strawberries, your crumble, and you've got your uh, bubble waffle. We've known each other for a long time. I know you folks know how much fun I'm having over this. <laughs> if I had to choose, i probably choose the, uh, you know, the one that's overtaking them all right now would probably be the apple, the caramelized apple bubble waffle. That would be right now first place out of all this deliciousness. But we're not done yet. We have this monster right here in front of us, which looks like some sort of chocolate burrito, but it's a crepe. So I'm apparently told that it has some sort of Nutella mousse inside, and then this chocolate, white chocolate powder on top. But just when she said Nutella mousse, you know, my, 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 my knees got weak. <laughs> As many of you, I, I also like chocolate. If you folks are ready, I'm ready, okay. Just so we get that Nutella mousse out there, okay? Holy cow. Oh, it's got, it's got bananas in there. So it's got the Nutella mousse, bananas, I don't know if the bananas are cooked or not. Check it out, check it out. And then you've got the white chocolate powder. Check out how it oozes. I need you to love me as much as I will love you. I think. Oh boy, is this, it's fighting me folks, it's fighting me. It's not going without a fight, but I am relentless. It is exquisite. I think it, has, it, may, it may have a little bit of a liquor. It is so good. Let me try the banana. I think, I think they might have, they might have uh, flambated. It tastes a little bit of like, it has some alcohol in there. Oh wow. Folks, this is amazing. This is definitely worth the trip. So if you, if you or someone you love has a bit of a sweet tooth, these are the two I'm recommending to you. I'm recommending to you the chocolate Nutella mousse crepe and the caramelized apple with cream cheese uh, bubble waffle. Remember those two. So the other ones were delicious as well, but I think these two overtake them very clearly. So you've got my recommendation. Crossing South folks, don't go anywhere. There's more coming your way. I'm trying to show you the places we found a dessert place. So after getting to meet someone who has found in Baja not only a home, but a work-enhancing atmosphere, and getting to taste the sweetness of TJ-style crepes, we leave satisfied at the experiences acquired and look forward to the next time, the next time we cross out. Like to know more about the places you've just seen? Maps, videos, podcasts, and more at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.